All right, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics, and in this video, I'd like to discuss Dominic Raab's mission to remove our human rights, what his justifications are, how they are demonstrably false, and what it could mean for us. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So conservatives wanting to remove our human rights is nothing new. Some conservative MPs, and I emphasise some, have been pushing for this ever since they took power in 2010. After the Brexit referendum, the idea seemed to gain momentum amongst conservatives who spied an opportunity to actually do it. See, the issue, is, of course, is this. You, you just come out and say, we want to remove your human rights. The people might turn around and go, we quite like our human rights. We don't want you getting rid of them. See, what they're trying to argue now is that well, it's this messy EU legislation. We need to replace it with our own Bill of Rights. Oh, uh, that sounds OK. Uh, they don't want to take away our human rights, Phil. That's not the idea at all. They just want to change the EU smelly version for our good old British version. This is how it's been sold to the public. Small flaw in the plan, however. Our human rights laws are not EU laws. There are a lot of uh, laws we have in this country that were developed whilst we were EU members and, and by the EU. Um, this isn't one of them. The Human Rights Act 1998, which was uh, the Labour government at the time implementing the European Convention on Human Rights formally into domestic law. It had been the law for, for decades, but it was a way of basically saying, look, you know, this isn't just some international law. This is fundamental to, to, to British uh, sense of fairness and of course we should have this enshrined in British law and uh, has nothing to do with the EU. Like one of the huge dangers of Brexit is that it allows charlatans in government to conflate anything with the word European in it with the European Union. That's why you'll get people, Brexit supporters, go I'm not European. You are European. It doesn't matter about politics. Geographically we're in Europe. We haven't sailed to Africa or something. The European Convention on Human Rights came about through the Council of Europe. This is not the European Union. This is not a part of the European Union. This isn't even the precursor. The Council of Europe is a completely separate body with a much larger membership, and, and that membership still includes us. In fact, the European Convention on Human Rights was originally the idea of Winston Churchill, British Prime Minister, and was devised largely by British lawyers in the aftermath of the many human atrocities committed in Europe during the 1930s and 40s. It came into force in 1953. That was several years before the EEC, which is what became the EU. It has not been updated by the EU since. It's totally, se I cannot emphasise just how much it is totally separate. The Human Rights Act 1998 makes no reference to the European Union or Union law. It represented the Labour government, as I say, of the time, cementing the international rules into domestic law. The court named as having oversight was the European Court of Human Rights. Again, this is not an EU court totally separate. The EU is a member of the Council of Europe, just like the UK always has been and continues to be. So when a government minister says that they want to remove the Human Rights Act or withdraw from the European Convention on Human Rights and they link it in any way to Brexit or the EU, they are lying. This isn't a case of arguing whether this is an EU law that is still in our interest and we should retain it. You know, let's not just destroy EU laws because they're EU laws. Some of them are rather good, in fact. No, no, this has nothing to do with the EU. Nothing that the EU have ever decided, whether we were members or not, whether it was as the EEC or as the EU, has had any bearing on the Human Rights Act or anything in it. Now, the reason I talk about this, because about a week ago, someone clipped a newspaper article that reported Dominic Raab, the new Justice Secretary, you know, after he was sacked as Foreign Secretary, saying that he wanted to introduce a mechanism to allow the government to introduce ad hoc legislation to correct court judgments that ministers believe are incorrect. That's a terrifying prospect. In other words, when a court finds that the government have acted unlawfully, as happens from time to time and happens a lot since Boris Johnson took over, ministers want the power to overrule them. 
So the court says, aye, the government broke the law. Minister goes, no, we didn't. Change your judgment. In other words, the government wants to be completely above the law. Now, just below it on this clip, you can see the quote about wanting the Supreme Court to have the last word. At least I hope you can. That's what it says. Uh, no, no, we, we need the Supreme Court to have the last word on these matters, not a Strasbourg court. A statement designed to appeal to the jingoistic xenophobes that were fired up by Brexit. But what is this statement actually telling us? It's telling us that they want to withdraw from the Council of Europe as well. The European Convention on Human Rights is international legislation. As such, there is an international court set up to decide matters related to it. Rob cannot be saying that only British courts should decide. Why should an Italian accept that only a British court can decide on their human rights? Or a Spaniard? Or a German? That makes no sense. This law is international law. It has to be decided by an international court. British courts judge on matters relating to British law. If we are saying that we don't want any international courts to decide any matters of law relating to British people or British businesses, then what we are saying is that we are not going to respect any international law. Because that's how it works. You know, that means we have a government who are advocating the suspension of all international laws pertaining to the UK. Now, we've already seen this. The government freely admitted to breaking international law earlier this year in its treatment of the Northern Ireland Protocol in a, in a limited way. What was it now? I can't remember the other term they used. Priti Patel is encouraging border patrol officials to push migrants back into the open sea, increasing the chances of them dying by drowning. She's even trying to implement legislation to prevent such border patrol officers from being prosecuted for these acts. But changing domestic law doesn't change international law. So they'll still be breaking international law that stipulates that you must attempt to rescue people in distress at sea. Not do the opposite. Not imperil them. So what's really happening here is that Priti Patel is saying that the UK will not cooperate with any inter investigations into breaches of international law. You know, we are not going to enforce international law. We are to become a pirate island as well as a plague island. A place where international law will not apply if it is inconvenient to the government or where suspending it provides them with a few good headlines. But all of these plans to set themselves above the law and murder asylum seekers for positive headlines comes unstuck thanks to our human rights laws. This is why Raab is making it his mission to remove them. You know, and this appointment made sense for Boris Johnson for a couple of reasons. Firstly, he had to sack Raab over the Afghan withdrawal mess. It was an absolute disaster. But the thing is, Raab is apparently too popular in the Conservative Party. I'm not sure why, but he is. Uh, so he couldn't just piss him off and let him on the back bench as annoyed. So he had to offer him something. Secondly, the previous Justice Secretary, Robert Buckland, was clearly willing to sell parts of his whole soul for power because, you know, he agreed to go along with all sorts of rubbish. But he was not going along with this idea of dismantling our legal and constitutional framework. He wasn't prepared to do that. So he got rid of Buckland and replaced him with Raab. Someone who's not qualified for the job. You are supposed to be a senior lawyer if you're going to be the Justice Secretary. Raab is not. He's legally trained. He spent a few years in very junior work before he became an MP very young. He did not spend much time as a lawyer. But anyway... You know, it doesn't matter that he's not qualified for the job. Boris Johnson has found someone with no moral boundaries at all willing to remove our human rights. And once it's gone, it'll not just be to allow the government to break the law freely and sentence to death those fleeing persecution and war. It will remove our rights to freedom of expression, our rights to fair trials. Our very right to liberty and life itself will be removed because that's the only place these, these rights exist. They don't exist in other laws. Overnight, these rights that you think you have will all be gone. You know, very few laws actually extend much into the way of rights for us. This is why before the 1950s, life was cheap. Going to work could be a deadly occupation for many. No consequences for anyone should the worst happen. It was the law of the jungle when it came to how people should be treated. If you were rich and powerful enough, you would be treated with respect. If not, your treatment was entirely at the mercy of others. Frankly, the best hope is that although Dominic Raab is absolutely evil enough to go ahead with this, that he lacks the basic competence to pull it off. Because I would imagine 
forces will be set against him. The civil service will not want to go ahead with this. They'll have to obey orders, of course, but they won't want to go ahead with this. Obviously, the judiciary will not wish to go ahead with this. And for those who want to keep banging on about it, oh, Phil, this is only going to apply to foreign courts. Take note. That is not the case. Even if it were, this is still to our detriment because it removes our rights internationally. The Tory party manifesto, however, for 2019, expressly included sections on how they were going to dilute the power of our own courts. Expressly. They were going to prevent the courts holding the press to account when they really go too far. This would allow newspapers to literally hound people to their deaths and suffer no risk of prosecution. The manifesto expressly said that they would look at the separation of the government and the courts. Separation of executive, which is the government, legislature, which is parliament, and the judiciary, our courts, are vital elements of any functioning democracy. They all have to be separate so they can do their own work without fear of interference from one of the other pillars. The government wished to abolish those separations. By natural consequence of our first-past-the-post system, they have already broken the separation between parliament and government. They will now intend to do so with the courts. Our courts. They want to appoint the very judges who are supposed to provide oversight over everyone in the country, including the government. By appointing their friends and being able to change judgments that they don't like, as well as make their own laws, something they've also been doing this past year, they intend to essentially destroy our democratic pillars. You know, when it is the government who make laws and not parliament, then it's as if we have no parliament, just a toothless talking shop. When it is the government who decide who should and should not be found guilty of breaches of their own law and not the courts, then it's as if we have no courts either, except for the little people, of course. And when the government can proceed as if neither parliament nor the courts even exist, then we have a tyranny, not a democracy. And it all starts off with something that sounds harmless to people who are not thinking it all through. It's all been phrased as this idea of giving British courts more power, when their manifesto expressly says they want to weaken British courts. You know, and by the time people realise, it will be too late. The last election was absolutely crucial, I said at the time. Because the results were as they were, this country has now gone down a path from which it cannot quickly turn back. People just think, oh, we just need to, t we cannot turn back for many years to come with where we've already gone, no matter what now happens. If the next election goes badly wrong, and there's an awful lot going to happen before that next election, I genuinely shudder to think where we're going to end up. Our biggest weakness is this brainless belief that the things that happened in other countries, we can look at history, we can see what happened in other countries under the same conditions we have right now. But we have this belief that that couldn't possibly happen here. Well, I have news for you. It's already happening. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.